Hey there, I just um, wanted to give everybody a really quick um, overview of Planner. I've had some people ask me about it and how it um, how they can do some project management with it. So I just wanted to show you how we use uh, Microsoft's Planner. It's built in to Office 365. Um, this is part of, if you do decide to upgrade to Business Premium, you would um, get Planner in with that upgrade. It's right there. This is your main Office 365 um, you know, screen homepage when you log in. So you'd see Planner right there. And um, that's for the extra $8 or $8.50 a month um, that you'd have to pay per user um, to upgrade to the business premium. Okay, so uh, we Planner is is a, basically a project management system, but it's not a it's not like a super complicated one like Microsoft Project. It is um, very simplified. It's easy to use. It's a lot like Slack or some of these other Red Booth, some of these other um, not Slack, but some of the other um, you know drag and drop uh, task managers out there, right? So a planner is created, um, a project management basically uh, system is created for every single group that you have in Office 365. So like I said, Office 365 works a lot in groups. So we have created um, a group, which is in turn a team um, called Sinlon Sales and Marketing. So I'm gonna show you how that works. So in Teams, let me pull Teams in, we have, um, a sales and marketing group. Okay, here you go. So we do a ton of stuff in Teams. Teams is not Planner, but it but Planner can integrate into Teams. Just to give you an idea. Okay, so we've got a team. When you spin up a group or a team, it automatically creates a planner. It automatically creates a OneNote for your team and your group. It automatically creates an email alias for your team or group to email everyone in that team. Okay, it automatically creates a SharePoint site for that team and group, and it automatically. Um, creates, well, the SharePoint sites is the OneDrive, is the file sharing for it. Um, so let's go into Planner that we've created. You'll see all of the groups I'm a part of, okay? These are all the groups I'm a part of. When I join a group or when you create a group, a planner is made for each of those. So you can see this is just called Jackie stuff. It's just stuff that, that I want to get done that's important to me that maybe other nobody else really needs to know about or cares about, okay? Then I had a group for our distributor conference. Okay, you can see there are nine members in that group. Um, then we have our sales and marketing group. There are 12 members in that group. And then our Sinlon distributors group, okay, that has the 264 members. That's the Sinlon distributors SharePoint site. Okay, everybody that's in there also, there is a planner for everybody that's in there. But let's stick um, to sales and marketing because that's the one that's most built out right now. So inside of Planner, you have buckets, okay? So these are basically your categories. You can create these. I have made our categories, um, which is commercial sales, competitors. Um, what are other ones that we have here? Corporate marketing, distributor recruitment, distributor support, email marketing. These are all buckets, right, that are categories that tasks will fall under. I've created them to match. Um, because we also use Teams, our channels and Teams. Channels and Teams is where you have conversations about stuff. So let's just go, um, for instance, to um, corporate marketing. So you'll see here in corporate marketing, we're having a conversation about blog articles and, and different things like that, okay? Um, and then we also are, these. this is where we share files for corporate marketing, okay? This is just with my team of 12 members. But you can see that this structure over here, corporate marketing, distributor recruitment, distributor support, et cetera, mimics the buckets I've created in Planner, corporate marketing, distributor recruitment, distributor support. All right, just to help keep it organized. So if we're gonna talk about a task, if we wanna have our conversation about our tasks, we can have the conversation in the task or we might have the conversation in, in our teams, right? We might have the conversation here or we can just have the conversation right here. Okay, so here are some examples of how tasks work. Here's one right here under corporate marketing. I'm gonna click on it and it's here's the description of the task. I can hit this little button that says show the description um, you know, in the preview like you see over here the, that will show it in the preview. I can decide that I actually wanna show any attachments in the preview by just clicking there that'll change the preview. Um, 
I can assign people. I can assign multiple people. I can assign just one person. I can remove people from the task. They will be notified when a new task is created and they will also be notified if their task is overdue. I can change the bucket or assign the bucket here. I can mark it as not started in progress or complete. And I can set uh, start times and then due times when, it, you know, deadlines. Um, so if I, let's say my task has multiple components to it, you know, so first you need to contact, contact the Fiverr guy. Um, this is to create a uh, animated GIF um, signature in the email block. Then we need to approve the design. And then we need to implement standard signature to team. Those are if I want to break this task down into little tiny, tinier sub subsections, and I can decide that that's what I want to show on the card. Okay, here's some here's some supporting documentation that because I created this task for Erica, that Erica is going to need to get this job done. So she's going to need our logos because she's got to send them to this guy on Fiverr.com to create the signature. So I uploaded the logos that I'm explaining here that she needs to work with. And then in here is where basically we will communicate back and forth on it. So let's pretend I'm Erica. She might be like, at Jackie, I um, reached out to the guy, to the Fiverr guy, waiting for a reply, right? She'd send that to me. I will get an email. When she hits send, I will get an email saying, okay, I know that Erica's working on this. I don't have to ask her. I just see that she's working on it because she updated the task. I can then come back, I can click on the, the email I get that says she's working on it and I can ask a question, I can update my own um, information if I have anything on it. I can say, oh, I actually wanna add this other logo, something like that, but we can have a conversation. And it's gonna save the whole conversation below, the whole history of this task below. Over here, you can um, you know, label these and these are customizable, but I've got high priority, low priority, and then a scrum topic. And that just means if it's in light pink, it means I wanna talk about it in our weekly meeting. So you can, you'll see those little tags. Um, you can see if something's in progress, it's gonna have this little icon like that. Um, you can see that's a scrum topic, right? And then you can also drag and drop these um, around. So let's just say, well, this really needs to be an email marketing. You just drag it and drop it into email marketing as well. You can look at it different ways over here. So I can, right now I'm looking by bucket. Well, I can just look by who it's assigned to. So now I can quickly see what does Erica have to do? What does John have to do? What does George have to do? What's everybody got going on? Well, what if I want to group it by um, its progress, okay? Now I can just quickly see these are everything that's not been started. This is what's in progress and this is what we've actually completed. I can also group it by due date. So this is what's late, this is what's next, that's within the future, this is everything that has no date. So we've got some things that are that are overdue here. And then I can ask these people, you know, how that's going. So definitely different groupings based on what it is that you want um, need to get done. Or group by labels. So um, here, these are, so on the day of the scrum, I don't have to go around looking for my pink labels. I can just group by labels and then I can quickly go down to everything it is that we want to talk about in our weekly meeting. Okay, that's all the stuff I definitely want to talk about. Some of this other stuff, we it, it's done, but we don't need to talk about it every week. Um, now, this is where it gets fun. You can look here and go to your chart up at the top, and you can see there's 70 tasks left. There's 160 completed. You can see who's got the majority of the tasks, um, you know, who's, who's working on them, who hasn't started them, and who's late. And then over here, there's more groupings as well. I can do the same thing in a group by assign to and quickly scroll down here. Another thing on this main board that I didn't show you oops, was if you're here on this main board and you click on a person, let's just say I click on Jackie. It's going to highlight all of my tasks, whatever view, whatever you know way you're grouping it right then, it's going to highlight Jackie and all of those different areas. Just another way to quickly find things. Over here on the left, you can just click, see how I'm part of all of these groups? Well, I don't necessarily want to have to click into each group to see what my tasks are. So if I just click on my tasks, it's going to give me all of my tasks, no matter which group they're in, and not started in progress completed. And again, I can change that view and I can look by plan, which is most commonly the way that I look at it. Um, 
and it'll basically give me all my all my tasks by which plan they're in. I can also look by when they're due. So here's all the plans I have. So I can say this is what I have to do across all my plans. And then I can also look by due date and just see what, what's, what am I laid on. This is all the stuff I'm laid on. All right, Planner Hub gives you a snapshot of how, what's, how everything's going on in all of the groups you're a part of. Okay, um, and then just to show you how that integrates into Teams, like I had said, so if you are using Teams as a communication vessel, um, basically you can add Planner to the team so you never actually have to leave Teams. So I'm just gonna go up here where I've added it is in general. Um, so I've added a tab up here. This is where we have conversation, but I added a tab up here called Planner Tasks, and you'll see that what it does is it actually just pulls in all of that, that whole, see all my buckets, it just pulls it right in here to planner so that I never actually have to leave this um, environment if I don't want to. So I can just work from planner from in here. It's a little easier for me to work from it in the, in the main full web browser version, but if you wanna work in it from here, you can. And then if you just wanna get out of here for whatever reason, you can click on this little icon and go to website. It's gonna pull it up in the main website just like we were in there. Um, and oh, well, I think I showed you how to add new ones. So anyway, so yeah, that's Planner in a nutshell. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.